Court from intervening and and I just wanted to talk about three main points um, before we get going with your questions and I wanted to start off with where we're headed this next week um, the legislature does meet um, starting on Wednesday for what we refer to as their veto session and we anticipate that we're going to have some really long days and there will be lots of back and forth not only within the Senate and within the House, but then between the two, the two houses. Um, it does. Uh, one of the things that um, that I will tell you has surfaced up in just the last few weeks is just a, quite a variety of tax proposals. We have had just about every tax proposal under the sun. I think you guys can think back to just the last year or two and gas prices were, for some of us, in the mid $3 all the way up to $4. Um, but now that we're just under that $3 mark, guess what one of the first proposals is? Raise taxes on um, fuel uh, by $0.05. Cents. We um, obviously started our legislative session with the governor proposing uh, an increase in tobacco products and an alcohol those have really received really mixed reviews and, and not really been supported because, quite frankly, there are some legislators that have felt it's not enough revenue to come in, and there have been those that feel um, that it's not really a very fair tax because it impacts just a, a few. Um, but I know that Representative Sutton and I both, for the last uh, two weeks, have been going and meeting with a variety of organizations and, and groups of people. And um, just earlier this week, I met with the Olathe Chamber folks because they had asked that the legislators that serve Olathe go in there. And I was surprised and a little disappointed because so many of the other legislators that were there just kind of shook their head and said, yep, we'll be needing to raise taxes. and. Um, We'll see what the different tax proposals are. Um, I know that Representative Sutton has spoken before, I have spoken before, that quite frankly we don't really support increases in taxation. Um, we do have spending problems within the state and within our public um, entities, which includes our schools and, and our cities and counties. I know, raised eyebrows. Um, but I'll give you just one quick example. Um, I was at a, a legislative meeting two days ago, and another senator was presenting, and she said as she was going through um, the reports for the state departments, one of the things that struck her is just looking in the Department of Commerce, they had overspent their budget by $5 million. They had overspent their budget by $5 million. And so a budget was set, was set, funding was provided, and yet we had this uncontrolled spending. Um, I, I do think that that really illustrates the need for zero-based budgeting. We need to do it in our state departments. We need to do it in our school districts. Um, this is the first year, many of you know, I served on the Board of Trustees at Johnson County Community College for 18 years. This is the very first year that that college, who's been around for more than 40 years, ever has done zero-based budgeting. And what that simply means is you start with that blank slate and you identify, okay, what are our fixed expenses? What's our payroll? What are utilities? What are the different expenses that we know we have to meet? And then you solicit from the faculty and from the department chairs and the deans. Um, what are the needs for next year? Is there equipment that needs to be replaced and so forth? And what are the wants? And you start to build what the needs are. But currently what we do is we say, how much did we spend last year? Well, costs have gone up and we find out what 
the average is for increase in, in costs, and so we just tack on 7% more or 10% more. That's how we have been budgeting. That's how our schools budget, that's how our government budgets, and we have to get away from that. 